Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Ian Blume, and I am the BISGAP program coordinator. Um, and I'm here with my colleagues, Kelly and Asra, who will be uh, in the in the behind the scenes and important information. But also, I'm here with our regional director of the Florida SPDC at FIU, uh, Brian Van Hook. Uh, Brian, thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. And uh, he'll be presenting more about the today's topic on small business grants and financing, what you need to know. Brian, thank you very much. The floor is yours. Thank you, Ian. And thanks to everybody for joining. I know folks are still streaming in. I would encourage you guys put in the chat who you are. I know I see a lot of friendly faces. So please put in the chat like who you are, what's your business, because um, we definitely want to know who you guys are. We want to make this interactive. We want to make it fun. Um, I'm not going to just be reading from slides where you guys are kind of killed by PowerPoint and we're bored to death by PowerPoint. Um, and this is a very important topic for um, our community and small businesses, because I know everybody's always looking for grants um, and everybody's looking for financing for their small business. So um, at the end of the day, we're really going to get you some good actionable information. But just like when you're eating dinner, we're not just going to give you the dessert, which is the grants. We're also going to give you the meat and the potatoes and the broccoli, um, which is all the other aspects of financing, because we really want you to understand financing for starting your business and growing your business. And um, so we are going to talk about like the continuum of capital or the continuum of financing and also like the different paths, because you can hop on and hop off at different steps. And so I see we have about 55 folks um, kind of in the webinar. So we just really thank the great response that we got. I think we had over 250 people register. Um, so I will get started um, before just the housekeeping. Um, please put um, who you are in the chat. I see a lot of you guys um, already doing that. Also, any questions that you have, please put them in the chat because when I'm doing the presentation, I can't see the chat, but um, Ian and Kelly and Azra are gonna kind of collect the questions and we will answer the questions at the end of the um, presentation. I would also um, reiterate that this webinar will be recorded. So you will be able to watch it later um, on kind of your own time in your pajamas with the coffee um, on our YouTube page. And we also will send you a copy of the presentation. So um, you will be able to look at the presentation afterwards. Um, the information is not proprietary or anything like that. It's information you can find on your own. We just put it together um, with that. So with that, I'm going to start. And like I said, I'm going to do the presentation. And then I will save some time at the end to answer some questions from you guys. But just thanks for being here. So let's pull it up. Let's see. OK, how's that, Ian? Switch it or the good? It looks great. OK, cool. So, all right, guys. So we're here to talk about small business grants and financing. Um, Brian, what's that? It, can you can you change the display settings? Yeah, I can do that. So you can people can see the full screen. There you go. How about that? There it is. Perfect. Okay. Now cool. it's all sorry, sorry about that, guys. Sometimes it's a little little wonky. Um, who am I? I'm Brian Van Hook. As Ian mentioned, I'm the regional director of the Small Business Development Center here at FIU. I've been with the center since 2014. Um, relevant to the topic at hand. Um, I have previous experience working in Washington, D.C., in, in the United States Senate, in the Congress, and also at the Department of Commerce. Um, why is that relevant to this topic? Because a lot of the issues that I worked on were government agencies that had grants and different programs and things like that. So I ended up, for better or worse, being kind of like the grants guy in our office. So I am familiar about grants and financing, both at the federal level and also on the state and local level. Um, so I'm kind of bringing that information to you guys um, here um, back in Miami and also South Florida. In terms of the SBDC at FIU, all you guys know SBDC by now, I hope. Um, we are just have a really great program that's mission-driven consultants that are focused on helping um, small businesses in our communities in Miami-Dade and also the Florida Keys. Um, we're very impact-driven. We're very focused on outcomes for our community and also our small businesses. Um, and very and relevant to the topic at hand, you guys do see that um, since between 2014 and 2023, we've been able to um, help launch almost 500 local businesses, and we've helped businesses to access um, capital 
in excess of $475 million. That's everything from mom and pop grants from the county, small little $5,000 grants for a small business, all the way up to like venture capital, equity, um, commercial loans, um, all those types. So it's kind of like all stripes of capital and financing we've been able to help. And then we're very proud that we were named the uh, National uh, Small Business Development Center of the Year uh, for 2023. We still are kind of the reigning SBDC of the year until May of this year, but I'm just really proud of our team um, and the work that they do in the community. So I do like to shout that out at every um, point, as I should, when you have a great team and um, really great consultants that you're proud of um, on that. And then we're um, conducting this presentation under BizGap. Uh, the Business Growth and Acceleration Program. So I do want to give a shout out to BizGap so you guys can look out for us in your community. Um, BizGap um, is a project or program that we've run under SBDC since 2016. It's really focused on providing hyper-local consulting, training, and outreach to small businesses in targeted communities and commercial corridors. Um, the underlying pr principle is to meet small businesses where you are in the community, whether that's in a webinar, in a a workshop um, on, you know, your, the small business uh, corridor that you're in, um, in the community, um, at libraries, at community centers. And the added bonus for that is it's a tool in the toolkit for local communities that may not have specialized consultants, may not have um, small business uh, staff to be able to help their businesses. So we do want to be like a value added for local communities that are helping businesses to start and grow their businesses. And then this is just some facts on BizGap um, in terms of the work we've done for canvassing, um, community trainings that we've done, uh, business launches, things like that. And the great part is under BizGap, we're going to um, almost double some of those numbers that we've done. So we're just really excited about this project. So this particular BizGap project is funded mm -hmm. by the Small Business Administration. So thank you to the SBA. Um, and it's focused on the 27th Congressional District, which stretches all the way from downtown Miami um, Little Havana, Coral Gables, over to Key Biscayne, uh, Westchester Kendall, down to Palmetto Bay and Cutler Bay. And this uh, BizGap in District 27 is going to focus on training and outreach um, and canvassing to businesses, um, similar to what we're doing right now with this webinar, one-on-one -on -one business consulting, and also doing surveys and data mapping of particular businesses in the district to really find out the pulse for what they need, how we can help them, how communities can help them. And we have a goal to um, assist over 1,000 businesses in the district that's consulting and training um, through December of this year. And uh, my hope is with our team, my challenge to the team is I think we can probably like um, go above that um, as we usually try to do. So we're really excited about getting, getting started. In terms of this particular webinar, um, we are going to focus on kind of three core objectives. First, we're going to talk about the different stages of business um, because that impacts what type of financing you're looking for. We're also going to talk a little bit about financing that comes in to start or grow the business and some key terms that you uh, need to remember. We're also going to discuss that continuum of small business capital, um, starting from when you start your business all the way through growing the business and maybe selling the business or expanding the business and how you can access those different points. But I know you guys are here because you want to get particular actionable contacts. So I am also providing this presentation, not just lecture information, not just general information, but also actionable contacts and organizations and websites that you can um, research and contact to be able to um, explore financing for your business. So we're going to also provide those I'm at the end as well. So I'm, but I, I'm a big believer. I got to teach you guys to fish. So I'm going to basically teach you how to find the grants and what to look for in key terms. And then at the end, we're also going to provide you with those contacts to get in touch with. So everybody good? You guys ready to go? Put in the chat. If you're ready to go, put in the chat. Okay. So as we get into this, I want to kind of reiterate, you need to understand your particular business. And what's your why? What is your why for the business? Whether it's like at the idea phase or whether it's like at an established business that's been in business for 10 or 15 years. Really need to understand the why. When I talk about the why, there's different types of business ventures. Um, think about like a lifestyle business as we're talking about. That's a business that you're trying to build like a legacy. You want to build wealth for you and your family. Um, you want reliable profits. You want stability. 
in that case, you might seek more traditional financing because you want to like have it going. You want to have it going for a long time. You know, you're okay if it's kind of like at a certain pace, you don't need to hire 50 new employees. You don't need to grow the revenue to like $10 million. You just want something that's stable that maybe you could pass on to your family um, or that can provide for you and your family in the meantime. Um, on the other hand, there's those businesses that are really entrepreneurial. You're focused on building up a business, selling the business. Maybe it's a business that's one in many ventures that you want to start. You've got a lot of great ideas. Um, in that case, you're focused on growing the business. You want to grow the business really fast, really quick. Um, that does often uh, preempt profits. So you might not be as focused on profits because you want to grow up the business on employees, on revenue, um, in terms of uh, connections and business contracts and things like that. In that case, maybe you might be open for more alternative financing. Um, so like I said, your overarching goal for the business is going to drive your business strategy and the types of financing that you're going to access. In terms of the stages of business, um, you have three stages of your business. You have like the pre-venture, the idea phase, just like with the idea, with the light bulb. Um, you have a startup phase that's basically less than three years. And you have um, established businesses that have been in business for more than three years. So pre-venture, not yet in business, kind of exploring it. Startup phase, less than three years. You're kind of growing um, initially the employment and revenue. And then established business, you got some track record. You basically have revenue, you have, um, you're have you growing the business, you're kind of moving up. So those are kind of like the three different phases. Um, just real quick touching on when you're financing your business, when you're kind of like working on the startup side, um, you're going to have bills to pay before you start the business, um, before you launch your website. So whether you're a bricks and mortar, a service or an online business, um, you need to calculate those startup expenses. So depending on the type of um, business that you have, your startup uh, list, your list of expenses could um, vary. That could be office space, inventory, equipment, licenses, insurance. Um, you want to estimate those particular expenses, um, break them into one-time expenses and like recurring or monthly expenses. So you can kind of separate them out to figure out how much you're going to need. Um, and that gets into like bootstrapping or if you're reaching out to family and friends or if you're looking for some um, grants or uh, CDFI funding to go. And then you should calculate at least one year of those monthly expenses, but projecting three to five years is even better. And then, like I said, I'm not going to just tell you guys general abstract information. If you do want a template on how to um, put together those startup expenses, the SBA website does have a really good template. And it's a PDF that you can kind of like use and edit and make it your own. So I would encourage you to check it out. We did include the link up there as well. And then... Now, I know the topic you guys are here for. Everybody's here to talk about grants. Um, I want to caution you guys because there is a lot of scams regarding uh, small business grants. You guys can remember, if you're old enough, the guy that had the coat with all the question marks. It's like, buy my book. You can get small business grants. Um, and actually, um, I don't have I have it like right next to me in this cabinet, but I want to be a uh, professional, so I don't want to grab it. But I actually developed a small business uh, guide for my senator when I worked in DC. And I did not include a lot of those different grants because the federal grants are generally not for small businesses. They go to organizations, they go to states, they go to municipalities like Miami-Dade County. So they're not really available for personal or business needs. Um, they did like historically like 50 years ago, 20 years ago, um, but they weeded those out because the, the Congress didn't wanna be funding like individual businesses. Um, they wanted to fund more like programs and things like that. So that did get kind of weeded out. So I want to like really stress, don't, and even if you go to grants.gov, which is the federal uh, government website, um, you go to grants.gov and grants.gov um, generally has it for nonprofits, for um, local governments and things like that. They don't offer grants for businesses. If you actually click on where the link is for businesses, it directs you to some of the websites that I'm going to provide you later, like U.S. Chamber website, um, some of the national aggregators for foundations and things like that. Um, so I didn't even put grants.gov in this presentation because it's not helpful. It's not actionable to you guys. And then, like I said, small business grants that are available are traditionally given by community foundations, local governments, and nonprofits.
Um, small business grants, as I said, that are available, they're usually available on an annual basis, or they could be like a one-off, one-time program. And um, I would mention there's no free money. So while they are grants, you may have to meet certain criteria, or you might have to complete certain benchmarks to receive full funding. Um, the one thing I want to stress to you, too, is a lot of people look for just grants that they can get like right away, but they also do have some cohort uh, training programs that actually offer you a grant when you complete the program or you win the final pitch competition. Um, so at the end of the day, be aware of those that if you complete the program or you win the final pitch, you can um, you know, actually uh, win it. And those are things that you would check when the program announcement is available. And actually an example is like the Santander Bank has Cultivate Small Business Program that's actually open as of yesterday. And um, for Santander, you can, um, when you complete the program, you can get a grant ranging from like $1,500, $5,000. Sometimes if you win like the pitch, you can get um, like maybe up to like $15,000, which is pretty good for any business. So I'd also want to mention when we talk about loans and equity, um, debt financing is when you borrow money that has to be repaid over time. Um, traditionally with interest, um, it's non-dilutive. Um, for equity financing, that's raising money in exchange for a share of ownership in the business. Um, equity financing um, is dilutive, which means when more people uh, are given shares of the business, it dilutes the folks that already have shares in the business. Um, so that's a big thing for equity you know, to realize that like when you're in, um, basically like giving out shares is kind of splitting of the particular shares. And then related to debt financing, it's funds that have to be repaid. It's paid over um, a period of time. Um, the lending institution does not gain ownership of your business. Um, loans are often secured by your assets or your personal guarantee. And funds can be used for a variety of things like construction, equipment financing, working capital. Um, the different types of loans is like real estate loans, line of credit, leaseholder improvements, um, term loans. So those are generally like the general uses of those type of uh, loan financing. Um, in terms of loans, there can be short-term financing and long-term financing. Um, the period for short-term is usually like less than a year, but be aware because they usually have a higher interest rate and they're not really going to be like addressing your long-term capital investment needs. It's more of like a short-term fix. Um, really, you are better getting into long-term loans. Um, if you're business is in good shape, you have good credit, those type of things. Um, those are the type of um, financing that are really ideal for businesses long-term. On the topic of long-term financing, um, that could be a long-term loan or leasing. As we said, that's more than a year. Um, equipment is something you a lot of people uh, take out on a long-term loan or a lease, um, and eventually the business can buy it out. Um, and lo long-term financing is ideal because it provides stability but total interest paid over time is generally higher because they stretch it over a longer period. Um, but also long-term financing is good because that helps to build up your track record and your credit for your business. And it shows stability um, as we noted in the presentation. Specific to equity financing, um, that's raising money again in exchange for shares of ownership in the business. Um, this allows you to obtain funding without incurring debt or having to repay specific amounts within a time period. Um, the most common source of equity financing is, as they say a lot, friends, family, and business acquaintances, um, so people that you're familiar with. But you do need to be aware for equity financing that less than 1% of the companies that seek venture capital actually get funded. So like I said, I'm going to be real with you guys. I'm not going to um, sell you guys something that uh, may or may not happen. I want to be kind of upfront with you guys. So just be aware of that when you're factoring in angel investors, equity financing, those type of things. So that, now that I've given you some of those key terms, let's get into the actual things, the actual um, different points on this continuum or this pathway that you can access to finance your business. So this is the little continuum. Um, it is kind of like a circular um, road because like I said, you can access different points. It does come back around, um, but I did try to structure this where it's starting more from when you're starting the business than to when the business is more experienced. So that's kind of like the different continuum that we're gonna be talking about and how we structure the discussion. Um, obviously for the continuum, it starts with bootstrapping, that's you. Small business grants, mission-based lenders, 
all the way down to venture capital and equity. And then I'm going to go through each of those real quick before I get into the context. So like I said, for this, you can you, you can view that continuum as like a road or a pathway. You can access different points on that continuum, um, depending on the stage of your business, your industry, your business structure, the type of capital needs that you have at that time, and also other factors like your credit history, small business finances, um, et cetera. So let's get into it. Let's basically go through the different points so that you guys have, like I said, again, I wanna show you guys how to fish or what to look for. So when I give you these contacts at the end of the presentation, you have really good, um, you have really good, uh, you know, different information to be able to um, find the right folks for you. Okay. So bootstrapping. Bootstrapping is when you're basically self-funding expenses um, yourself or via family, family and friends. Um, that could be your savings account, your 401k, other financing. Um, the upside is that uh, you retain control of the business, but you take all the risks. So you definitely need to talk with your financial advisor to not jeopardize your retirement plans. Um, just be smart with it. Don't take out a lot of money. Even though you believe in the business idea, you really should talk to somebody like a third party to get some advice about your retirement um, and those different types of things. Um, and self-funding, again, could be like your savings account, your 401k. Um, like money that you set aside. Another option under bootstrapping is to reach out to family, friends, and business acquaintances. Um, but you definitely need to tread carefully when you're mixing like business and personal. Um, you want to clarify any risk to those potential investors. You want to settle on like a structured fundraising strategy. And you want to document all the transactions. You can't make it informal because that's gonna impact uh, your relationships with those particular family, friends, and business acquaintances. Um, also, if you get more formal equity and financing, you're gonna want to, um, you're gonna have to have those documentations because they're gonna wanna know who's invested in the business before they're coming in. Um, like I said, communicate regularly um, after you give the grant, um, after you get the initial investment and work your way up to more professional investors. So at the end of the day, um, don't burn your bridges. If you're reaching out to family, friends, and business folks, um, then basically you want to um, you want to communicate with them and um, keep in touch with them because a lot of the businesses that we work with that got an initial family and friends um, through bootstrapping, they actually reach it back out to them because they had good relationships with them. So they're able to like actually get additional funding from them later on. Don't just take the money and be like, see you. And then if you're in a pinch or something, reach out because that doesn't act, uh, make them feel comfortable with what you're doing and also incentivize them to help you out. Um, in regards to grants, like I said, the best use of your time is to research national, state and local organizations that provide grant funding to small businesses. Um, the federal government grants, like I said, are generally go to state and local governments and nonprofits. Um, not directly to businesses. There are some cases where they're businesses. I don't want to focus on those guys. I want to give you the stuff that you can get today or tomorrow. Um, not something that might be a one-off that um, you know you know might not see again. When you're looking for grants, you want to identify those that have the best chance of your securing them based on your industry, your business age and size, and other characteristics that are unique to you. And then um, I'm a big believer in like local um local grant opportunities um national grant opportunities are attractive they could be larger but if you're starting local there is an incentive for these local groups to basically be able to fund local small businesses so i would encourage you like when you're targeting as the graphic shows you um start local and then work your way up and so let's let's kind of go through the different grant organizations um starting local you want to look at your county or your city's economic development department um, these organizations do sometimes offer grants or incentives to local small businesses. Those could be small businesses that are already in the uh, city or county or businesses that are looking to move into the county or the city. Um, some of them don't have grants, guys. So just be aware, but it is good to get in touch with the small business person, economic development person, um, because those are really good resources. And sometimes they might not have a grant but they're aware of other grants or opportunities because they want to retain and grow businesses in their area. Um, other organizations that are local are business improvement districts, bids. 
community redevelopment agencies, CRAs, downtown development authorities, DDAs, and Main Street programs. These organizations often provide like facade improvement grants. If you want to improve like the front of your business or like the sidewalk, um, capital improvement grants for the business inside or other grants that are targeted towards recruiting and retaining businesses in those particular areas. So I know in Miami-Dade County at the end, um, I do have a list of CRAs, of business improvement districts, of downtown development authorities. So I'm gonna give you some of those um, con contacts and links so that you can reach out to them because there are a lot of grants that they have. Um, and again, they are on an annual basis. So you do wanna like track them and um, find out when they're open. Second, um, there are statewide, regional, and local community foundations that also offer funding for local projects. Again, some of these um, generally do target not-for-profits, but um, at the end of the day, there are opportunities for small business financing. So you want to um, you want to basically check out check in with them because these organizations do get philanthropic money from like national uh, private organizations and businesses. I mean, they do fun, funnel it towards community projects, community businesses, and other nonprofits. As with any program, you want to check your eligibility, um, application deadlines, and whether you're located in the areas that they're targeting. Um, I did provide a link for you guys. It's up here. That's focused on um, a community foundation locator. That's a tool that's on the Council for Foundations website. So you can actually look for particular foundations that are in South Florida, in Miami, um, so you can find different um, organizations that um, are offering potential grants for small businesses. And I also did include that link at the end as well. So I put it in the kind of those section by section here, but it also is provided at the end of the presentation. Um, on national organizations, there's national companies and organizations that do offer small business grants. Um, examples of those include like Federal Express, Barclays, um, the National Association for the Self-Employed. I love NACE. It's one of my favorite organizations um, that I worked a lot with in D.C. Um, they do have um, grants that are available for home-based businesses, people that are just starting out. Um, so it's a really good opportunity. Um, also, here in Miami, we do have a great organization, Partners for Self-Employment. I'm going to encourage you to check in with them as well because they do have some funding um, available. They also work with some of these national um, funding grants and loans. Um, and as noted, you want to check your eligibility requirements, how the funds are used so that you can submit a successful application. And then again, kind of um, beating, hitting that point again, don't forget that there are some cohort uh, training programs that could offer you small business grants when you complete that program. So shout out to that. Um, next up is mission-based lenders. Um, there's mission-based lenders that are also known as Community Development Financial Institutions, CDFIs. They have a primary mission to promote economic development in low-income and underserved areas. Um, these organizations do provide uh, affordable financing, training, and support for small businesses that are in low-income low areas um, and to underserved communities. Um, funding is often a mix of federal and state resources and private funding. Um, Mission-based lenders can focus on a particular geographic area or underserved populations. Um, they do have a mix of services they offer. It could be loan products and also technical assistance. So if you want to identify CDFIs that are in your area, there is like a national kind of federal program that's called the Federal CDFI Fund. They do have a really good list on their website that lists all the different CDFIs that are available uh, nationwide, and you can search by state. So I did include that link in the um, back end of the presentation. And also I did provide you with a specific list of our local CDFIs. So I gave you kind of both at the end. Um, okay, so now we wanna get into SBA loans. So for SBA loans, um, those are uh, small business administration loans. They help businesses to access funding by backing them up from commercial lenders and CDFIs. The SBA uh, guaranteeing the loans reduces the risk for lenders, helps lower the down payments for borrowers, um, helps lower the rates and fees, and also provides continued support, like I said, technical assistance for some of the loans. So if you do want to find um, a local lender, you can actually visit the SBA Lender Match um, portal. Like Lender Match is on the SBA website um, that I put up there, and you can find a local SBA lender, um, or as they would say, a participating lender. Um, for SBA, they also do microloans. 
The micro loan program offers up to $50,000 to help small businesses and uh, nonprofit child care centers to start and grow. Um, the micro loan proceeds can be used for a variety of things. If you want to find micro lenders in your area, you can also search on the SBA website. I did include some information um, on micro lenders because I know in Miami, particularly like one of them is Ascendus. Um, so I did include that in the links at the end of the presentation. But you can also search up there in case you want to find other ones because a lot of times the micro lenders can cover like multiple states. So you can kind of look at um, different micro lenders and kind of shop around. Um, specific to SBA backed financing, the main program that they have under loan, the loan side is that 7A program. The 7A is kind of like their Swiss Army knife. I kind of debated putting like a Swiss Army knife uh, logo in there, but it's used for a variety of things. Um, you can use it for working capital, for um, international trade and exports, um, for like multiple purposes as it is identified up there. Um, and just 7A, I know it's weird that it's like a number and a letter. 7A refers to the section of the Small Business Act that this um, program was authorized under. So um, that's why it's called 7A. Um, under 7A, the maximum loan amount is $5 million. Um, factors to uh, that they consider is how the, your income is derived, what's your credit history, and also where your business operates. Um, they do have eligibility, eligibility requirements. Um, you have to operate for profit, be located in the U.S. You have to be um, within SBA size uh, requirements. Um, you can't be ineligible when they talk about that. It can't be like flipping houses, um, you know, real estate investments. It can't be, um, you know, related to like drugs and things like that. It can't be related to, um, you know, other types of businesses like massage parlors and things. Um, but you can look on the SBA website for those type of ineligible businesses. Um, they also do want you to be able to pay the pay the loan back. So they do look at credit um, and they, you want to be able to demonstrate that uh, ability to repay the loan. So just because the loan is backed by the federal government doesn't mean they're going to disregard all those regular lending um, aspects. And then, like I said, you can go to the SBA uh, lender match portal that can actually help you to connect with local lenders. Um, additionally, they have the 504 program, which again is named for Section 504 of the Small Business Act. Um, the 504 um, program is focused on um, fi fixed assets and real estate. So it's focused on like equipment and real estate. So if you're looking to buy a building, if you're looking to buy equipment for your business, um, that's the 504 program. Um, the 504 program is a little different than the 7A program because they do work through certified development companies, CDCs. Um, those are community-based um, lending groups. Um, CDCs are certified and regulated by the SBA. Um, there is a number of CDCs here in Florida. There's also ones around the country. Um, so you can uh, go to the lender. The, they, I'll give you a link in a minute. But they do have um, a place you can search. And the maximum loan amount is $5.5 million for the 504 program. Again, that's for fixed assets and real estate. Um, again, you have to be a for-profit business. You have to have a net worth of less than $15 million. Um, you have to have an average income of less than $5 million after your income taxes. Um, they do, again, want to make sure that you're actually an actual small business, that you have expertise with your management team. Um, they do look for things like business plans, character, ability to repay the loan. And then again, like I said, it's for new facilities, buying an existing building or land, and um, machinery and equipment. Um, and then for the 504 loans, they have a link on the SBA website where you can search for CDCs that are in your area. Okay, so now we're going to get into kind of some of the investment and in equity. Um, next up is friends and family rounds. So this is often called like pre-seed funding. Pre-seed funding is where you seek equity financing, um, whether that's early when you start the business or later on. Um, it can include uh, seeking family from, again, friends, family, and business acquaintances. Um, funding can range anywhere from $5,000 to $100,000, but there's no real restrictions or limits on what you can raise. Um, and again, when you're going for that pre-seed funding, um, you need to clearly define the risk to potential investors. You need to settle on a really defined uh, fundraising strategy and document all those transactions. Um, don't make it like a little loose because that could impact you with um, tax, with the IRS, that can impact you with future um, investors when you get to that round. Um, and like I said, basically it's from friendly 
friends and family and business acquaintances. Um, you want to have that shareholder or membership agreement that clearly sets out the uh, relationship of the business um, between the investor and the business. And um, if that's something that you need help with, we do have um, consultants on our team that can help you specific to um, venture capital and equity. Um, next up is commercial loans. So we talked about SBA loans. These are like traditional commercial loans. These are not guaranteed by the SBA. So there is more risk for the lenders. So they're going to have um, shorter, shorter repayment plans and also higher interest rates. Um, the upside to these commercial loans is that they might have additional financing options that are kind of like out of the 7A or 504 box. Um, and you only have to meet the lender requirements. You don't have to meet the SBA's requirements as well. Um, and you would basically utilize the lender's um, paperwork, their application, those type of things. You don't have to go through the SBA paperwork. Um, and the best recommendation for commercial loans is to start with folks that you know. So start with a lender where you have a personal banking relationship or a business banking relationship. Um, you want to start there and see maybe if you might be able to work with them on a commercial loan. Um, if they're not able to offer you a loan, you know, you can ask them why they're not able to, and then you can start shopping around and talk to other folks. And it might be a situation where if they're not going to make you a loan, you might go to another bank. Maybe they might might be open to make you a loan, but they would want you to take your deposits with you. So those are things that you need to factor in. Um, crowdfunding is also something that folks look into for funding their business. Um, in relation to crowdfunding, there are four ways that you can seek it. Um, it's donation based where it's basically no strings attached. People just give you the money for nothing in return. Um, there is equity based where um, investors can give you funds on a crowdfunding um, platform in return for shares in your particular business. Um, there is debt based investors that basically will get repaid with interest from whatever they put in. And then there's reward based um, crowdfunding campaigns or crowdfunding um, sites where you can donate like products or services um, in return for funds. So that could be, you know, if you're uh, doing like baking or something, you could offer them, you know, up to 50 free products. Or if you're doing like a comic book, you know, you can let them read the first 50 pages for free or something. So you could kind of come up with some reward based on what the crowdfunding um, is going to be used for. Um, sites that you can access for crowdfunding is like Indiegogo, Fundable, Kickstarter, uh, main best party round and Pepins, but you do want to look at each site. You want to do a little bit of additional research on it. Um, not all crowdfunding sites are equal. Um, you do want to look at also um, what are like some of the federal uh, guidelines and restrictions, um, which ones are falling under that, which ones are not. Is there any like um, kind of disclosure language that you should be aware of? Just really do your research on it before you just go up and start a campaign on these because you want to make sure there's no implications for you personally or for your business. Additionally, there is peer-to-peer -peer lending, P2P lending. Um, that's sharing your idea with other people in hopes that they're going to invest in your business. Um, you do want to uh, figure out how much you need, what's the purpose of the loan, post your listing online. Um, you might have to um, have a source of financing for your business You know, if you do find them. Um, different peer-to-peer -peer, uh, sites include Prosper, Lending Club, Upstart, and Funding Circle. Um, lending amounts traditionally for those range from like $1,000 up to like $50,000. Um, but again, like with any type of fundraising or financing, read the restrictions, read the background, look up recommendations. There is a lot of reviews online, like I got scammed or I didn't like this site or, you know, whatever. So you can really get a lot of good information by doing additional research. For these peer-to-peer uh, -peer business loans, um, they can cover expenses like working capital, purchasing equipment, uh, but you should review the lending terms, as we said, the terms and conditions, and just understand for peer-to-peer, -peer, um, they do have some restrictions state by state, so you do want to look whether you're in Florida, whether you're in another state, does your state allow that, because um, you want to be like within all the applicable guidelines and uh, law. And then back to like equity financing. Um, angel investors. So everybody always wants an angel on their shoulder, right? Everybody wants an angel to help them with their business. Um, in terms of angels, those are accredited individual investors who seek high returns with uh, that makes up for the high risk level that they're going through these private investments. And they usually look for early stage um, pre-seed companies. Um, for angels, they typically invest through clubs or associations. 
And what they're looking for is like businesses that have growth potential, strong management teams, like a really solid business plan to aid the angel in properly assessing the company's value. They look through tens of hundreds of thousands of business plans and ideas. So really they're looking for the diamond in the rough. So you really do want to have like a solid business idea, like something that's innovative um, because they are looking for things that stand out. And then, like I said, um, for angels, um, they do in, usually work within circles related to industries or technologies that they are personally familiar in. So they really um, can find out, engage what's a good business and what is it. Um, in regards to angel investors, um, angel investments finance businesses like in the early stages. Um, at that point, maybe they don't even have customers or revenue that they're generating. Um, instead, the angel would look for somebody that has a solid business plan. They have that MVP, minimum, minimum viable product, um, or have that strong management team that has really strong industry experience. Um, what the business gets is the business provides the angel with shares or the right to buy shares at a later time in exchange for getting the capital and investment in their business. Um, like I said, very few businesses um, seeking angel investments actually secure them. So you do want to manage your expectations and do your homework if you're going to go the route of angel investing. The upside is that angel investors can provide you with that strategic financing at the right time to grow your business. They also can bring that expertise that they have from the industry that can help you and your team as you're growing. So it would be like, a, like literally would be like that angel on your shoulder. Um, but angel investors, they're not doing it altruistically. They're not doing it out of the goodness of their heart. Um, even though the name is angel investors, they do want high returns on their initial investment and they want to, they may want to be involved in decision-making on that new company or the new investment. Um, so that could cause you control to lose control of your business. A lot of businesses are very excited about angel investing and getting investments when they start hearing about that, this person could kind of influence the day-to-day -day operations. They could include, they could like, um, impact like the long-term strategy for the business. That's when a lot of businesses do dial it back because they are comfortable with how it's going or they have a good vision for their business. So it is a trade-off where you're giving up kind of some of your control of the business in, in exchange for getting that expertise and the funding that you're getting. I would uh, stress for you though, that having an angel on your shoulder or on your business's shoulder, um, that could help you if you are seeking venture capital investors down the road. Um, but when you bring in that additional venture capital, the angels do maintain their ownership interest. Like I said, it's uh, dilutive. So they're going to still be part of the company and still have their shares as well. In regards to traditional venture capital, um, that's private equity financing. That's by firms or funds that are focused mostly on like early stage and emerging companies. Um, just like with angel investors, they want to look for high growth potential or demonstrated high growth. Um, that's either by number of employees um, annual revenue, or if you have an innovative product or service. And like I said, they strike out a lot. So they do want the ones that hit to really pay them back a high rate of return to make up for all the ones that they're funding that maybe don't have traction or don't move forward. Um, businesses seeking that equity financing um, traditionally are ones that can't get like bank funding or other uh, traditional financing. So that is the route that they go. But you do want to be aware that if you get equity financing, that might prevent you from getting a, a traditional loan um, that has any type of like personal guarantees or ownership requirements because you're giving up ownership to the investors that are coming in. So you might not be able to do like a personal guarantee or ownership. I know we did have that challenge with um, a local business here in Miami because they were part of like a larger group that had, um, I think, 51% ownership and they didn't have personally um, the 51% that F SBA would require. Um, so it was tough, tough for them to get like an SBA loan because they couldn't get up to that 51% because of the investments that they had. Um, again, like for the investment funding you're getting, uh, the investors receive shares of the company and they do play an active role in the company that they're investing in. They're not like just um, invest and forget. They do want to uh, manage their investment. So the upside is that you don't have to repay it. You don't put up collateral. You don't have interest rates. Um, but they will own a stake of your business and they may make controlling decisions um, based on how much they've invested. Um, what companies traditionally seek VC funds for is to commercialize a product, scale up, or to get insights from seasoned entrepreneurs. Um, like I said, due to the high failure rate, 
um, they do want a high rate of return from those companies that do seek do seek success. So the successful companies are funding the companies that are less successful. Um, in terms of uh, venture capital, I also want to mention, I haven't seen this um, flagged in a lot of presentations on venture capital, but the SBA also does license and regulate um, 300 small business investment companies, SBICs, um, around the country. SBICs leverage SBA guaranteed funds plus pr private financing that they raise to invest in small businesses in certain sectors and industries. Um, SBICs um, provide loans ranging from like 250000 to 10 million with interest rates between nine and 16%. Um, SBICs also invest in businesses in exchange for ownership in the company. Those particular SBIC investments could range between 100,000 and 5 million. Um, SBICs are a little different on the profile. They want more mature, profitable businesses with cash flow that they're gonna pay that interest um, if it's a loan. But each SBIC has their own investment um, portfolio or profile. So they might look on different geographies, like different stages of business, different industries. Um, the cool thing about SBIC is that a lot of the SBA success stories um, were actually funded by the SBIC program. So if you think of Apple, everybody knows Apple, right? Everybody's got their phone, or most people do. Um, Outpack Steakhouse, Intel, FedEx, Costco, America Online. Um, a lot of those companies did receive SBIC funding at one point in their um, business life. Um, to qualify for um, SBIC funding, you have to have, again, that 51% employees and assets in the U.S. You have to qualify as a small business, and you have to be in an approved industry under the SBIC stuff. And they, I will provide later under the contacts um, sooner than you think, but um, I will provide you with a link to the SBIC so you can find them. So everybody doing good so far? Did I kind of give you the good lay of the land in terms of what you're looking for? Um, put in the chat if you if it's been helpful, if it's been good. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get into the contacts. Um, so in terms of grants, in terms of local grants, um, you do have the mom and pop grants that are available from the county. Those are available by commission district. You do want to look on the website because the different districts are open at different times. Like right now um, in March, they are some districts are open, some are not. So you do want to look at who's your commissioner and when is their uh, mom and pop grant open? Um, you also do have, as I mentioned, some of those uh, community redevelopment agencies, CRAs. I did include the link up there for the CRAs that are located in Miami-Dade County. Um, also, you do have business agencies. Those are like um, the Miami Downtown Development Authority. Um, they have like the Coconut Grove Business Improvement District. Um, I did include like the Wynwood Business Improvement, Improvement District too. Um, in terms of local grants that I didn't catch in the uh, above. They do have a great website that's called Grants for You. I did see some of the local groups have incorporated that in some of their newsletters, but Grants for You, um, which I included the link, does have um, a list of some grants that are available. Also, Access Helps Miami um, also does have a listing of grants and different uh, loan programs and things like that. In terms of community foundations, um, I did mention to you about the tool where you can search on the Council for, um, on Foundations locator. Um, that's available there. Um, in terms of the keys, you do have the Community Foundation and the Florida Keys, um, Coral Gables Community Foundation, Key Biscayne, Key Biscayne Community Foundation. Um, the other big one in Miami is the Miami Foundation. Um, and I would kind of shameless plug, shout out for the Miami Open for Business. They do have grants and loans that are actually open right now. So I would encourage you to check their website, miamiopenforbusiness.org. Um, I know that a lot of businesses have received funding from that and it's been really helpful. They do have the loans and grants plus technical assistance as well. As well. In terms of national grants, um, on the national grant side, you basically have U.S. Chamber of Commerce has a, a great listing of uh, national grant programs. There's also some of these that were included there or not. Um, Busy, the Awesome Foundation, Women's Net Grants, um, as I mentioned, National Association for Self-Employed, um, FedEx has a really popular uh, small business grant program. And then there actually was a cool one that I didn't know about. It's under LegalZoom and the NBA. Um, that's called Fast Break for Small Business. And they do have some grants that are available too. Um, for mission-based lenders, you can actually search that CDFI fund locator to see. But some of the ones that I was able to identify on that list um, are Ascendus, 
Black uh, Business Investment Fund, Dade, Credo, Dade Federal Credit Union. The Florida Export Finance Corporation is also here in Florida if you're looking to do exporting. Uh, Miami Bayside Foundation, uh, Partners for Self-Employment, shout out to them. And also 10 North, which formerly was the Opelika CDC. Um, those are all local CDFIs that you can reach out to for um, different mission-based lending. Um, SBA lenders, um, I did mention the lender match tool that you can look for a local SBA lender. Um, also the CDC search for the 504 loans. I also included that as well. And crowdfunding. So I did include crowdfunding, peer-to-peer -peer lending. Um, I didn't try to go to each individual website because I don't want to make a determination on each one, but I did include some of the websites that included like a number of sites and had some different ratings and backgrounds. So I did include that. Um, in terms of South Florida angel investors and venture capital, um, I did include up there some angel investing groups that are here in South Florida. Also, I did um, include at the bottom Refresh Miami's website. They really have a good resources page that you can look up um, resources related to angel investors and venture capital. They also have really good newsletters and information. Um, for SBICs, um, I did include the SBIC directory that's available. Um, actually, um, there are a bunch of them that are in Florida. Um, there's only one that I saw that currently lists a Miami address. Um, that was Lafayette Square. Lafayette Square is actually in um, DC and in Miami. Um, but they do have a number of other SBICs that are in Tampa, other parts of the state as well. So you can look up the SBIC, um, the SB, SBIC directory and look for those. And they generally will cover Miami, even if they're not like physically based here. So you'll just want to look it up again, based on geography and in industry. All right. So I did make a time. I want to save time for you guys questions. So with that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Ian so that they can um, give me some of the questions you guys had. Yes, thank you very much, Brian, and thank you all for for all your questions, for all your participation. Uh, we've been on the background sending important links, which uh, will definitely help you um, start or grow your business. I have some questions here. I'm going to start uh, chronologically uh, from, uh, well, uh, we, we've, we've received some questions about non-for-profit business. Uh -huh. uh, Jesus will be sending additional information about those. Uh, we specifically focus on for-profit uh, companies, uh -huh. but we do have some resources that uh, can also help the in the non-profit sector. Um, also, a lot of questions regarding the the template. So, people have been asking for um, business plan template. Again, feel free to email Jesus and he'll give you, let me put his email right now. Yeah, right we here. can include that in too. When you guys send them the presentation, um, you yeah. can include the link for the business plan template because I know we have a couple of temp templates they can use. Exactly. And that's a, and that's a great segue for, for a lot of the, the next questions, which are um, in, in the, well, the links, they will be all available in the, in the PowerPoint presentation. So mm -hmm. don't worry, you'll get all this information and also be in the lookout in the upcoming days for, uh, in, in our YouTube channel, we're going to publish, uh, this webinar. So mm -hmm. you can, yeah. uh, as Brian mentioned earlier, um, watch it on your own time at your own pace. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's yeah, see. and I would mention to you guys too. Um, if you are looking to like follow up on some of these links that I gave you, um, definitely reach out to BizGap, BizGap.Miami. Register to meet with one of our consultants. Um, we're very collaborative, so if our team can help you, we will. And then also, um, we will. We're also collaborative. We can refer you to other organizations too if they have access to some of these grants or they can help you with something that our team can. So we will exactly. um, also refer to additional community organizations. Um, yeah. I saw the question on the YouTube channel, Ian. Uh, we will include that link in the follow-up. So we will basically get you guys the presentation with all the links that I provided. We will get you the link to the business plan template. And we also will give you the link to our YouTube channel so that you can see when it's posted. And uh, speaking of partners, uh, we, we have um, our Lenders Roundtable event, which is in person uh -huh. in April 1st. Uh, which you can go ahead and register. It'll be in the main library uh, in downtown. Uh, here it is. 
and you mm -hmm. can talk one on one in person to all our access to capital partners to really um so they can learn and establish a relationship with you guys uh, mm -hmm. to to see the different avenues and different options that your business has to grow from from that financing end um yeah. and i did see some of the questions ian i can kind of take them real quick um yeah uh, Sasha asked do you have to be a member of nace national association of self-employed to apply for the association grants i don't believe so um check their website but that i provided in this presentation but i don't believe you do have to be a member of nace to get a nace grant um similar to other organizations you don't have to be a member to get the grant um our real uh miss romero basically posted um, in five steps, what do we need to prepare to apply for an SBA loan? Um, I would encourage you on that to reach out to our team. We can help you on that. There are some key things that SBA lenders do look for. Um, so I wouldn't want to kind of sum it up for you quickly because I would like you really to work hand in hand with one of our consultants. So um, I would encourage you, if you're not already registered with BizGap, to register and we can give you that information. Um, yes. Sashe had another question on funding for faith-based organizations. Um, I think that that would be available under the nonprofit resources. So um, Jesus um, and Ian can follow up with that particular information. Which will come to you guys through email. Yeah. I, I got a, a question uh, from Aziz, which Jesus already answered, uh, mm -hmm. which is how am I gonna get in contact with you guys? Well, you can expect an email from us and with all this information that, that we've been talking about. Yeah. And then um, I do see there's a question based on my experience um, as you work through your pre-venture stage, when is the best time to start talking and formalizing the business, the funding opportunities? Um, I would say as you kind of start developing the idea and get a more formal process, like we talked about a business plan, like a structure. Um, also, don't let the business plan be the enemy of your business because um, you can do things like a business model canvas that's actually like a one page kind of like mini business plan that you can actually put your ideas on a page and kind of get get some things together so you can start moving. Um, we are big believers, like kind of don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. So you can do that and get that structured because you do want to have some type of like uh, business model canvas or business plan before you start talking to potential funders, even if that's like your friends and family. Um, you do want to have that. But that's where consultants like SBDC, BizGap, or other groups in the community, they can really give you that good um, advice to tell you, yeah, now's a good time for you to start talking to folks. Exactly. So even if you're just starting up from scratch or you're expanding, we have experts that can help you out at your stage of the business. Yeah. And then I do see there's a question, is there assistance to get our businesses certified as women and minority owned? Um, yes, there's great assistance on that. Um, SBDC at FIU under BizGap does have a great consultant that can help you on those certifications. Um, we also have additional consultants under SBDC, under Apex, um, Apex Accelerator that can help you. And then we're not territorial. There are other groups in the community that also can help you um, to get that certification as well. So I'm always going to say we're not the only game in town. I like to think we're really good, but um, there are other groups that can help you um, as well to get that certification. Um, but since we're family, since we're friends now, you can reach out to us. And um, we're also happy to get you connected if some of those organizations can help you. Um, and then somebody was asking about the template for the business model canvas. Um, that is something we can send you. Um, it is available in some of our startup presentations. So we do have a link for that as well. You're asking great questions because these are questions I have the answers to. Um, I think Jesus just put it in the chat as well. Um, for our website, our website is bizgap, B-I-Z-G-A-P dot Miami. So you can go to the bizgap dot Miami website um, so you can see more about bizgap. And then um, the last question I see, Ian, is um, from Samantha, where she said, would the lender roundtable event be beneficial to businesses that are service-based instead of product-based? Um, I would say yes, because um, lenders do lend to businesses that are both um, products and services. And it's actually a great opportunity to hear from lenders. So you're actually not hearing just from Brian or from Jesus that everybody knows. Um, you're hearing from actual lenders on what they look for, what's the lending environment, are there things you can change or things you can work on. So I would encourage you, whether you're product or service-based, to um, attend the lender roundtable. It's just really great events. And we just always appreciate the lenders um, coming together to do that because it's a panel of lenders, not just one lender. Yes, I just put the... Uh, our our website in case uh, you guys want to learn more about what we do 
and where can your business go? Um, it's right there in the chat. And once again, I want to thank you all for, for your amazing questions uh -huh. um, and, yeah. and for all your active participation. Uh, it's been really a pleasure. No, thank you, Ian. And just to recap, guys, we, uh, we will send you the link with the presentation and PDF with all the links. We will send you business model canvas, business model, business plan template. Um, we'll include the link to our uh, YouTube page as well as the BizGap website as well. And I see Jesus giving out his email address like candy. Um, so we will send you guys like a formal email recapping the information. Um, but I know Jesus, he's always proactive. I guess that's why everybody loves Jesus is because he's like, yeah, email me directly, email me directly. You don't want to see his inbox, guys. But um, but just want to thank you guys for attending and taking time to be in the presentation. We do hope it's helpful and um, just look forward to supporting you and your business. So definitely uh, feel free to reach out back to us if we can help in any way. Take care, guys. Thank you very much, guys.